Hey guys, Loftingriffer here as always, and welcome to the 4th episode of Kit Selection. We are playing a map with both primary and secondary suggested by my viewers. Kit for this episode was suggested by Mr. Dustin Purvis using suppressed M40A6 as a primary and the Glock 17 DevGrew as a backup secondary. Focus on long range and headshots with the M40 unless you have high damage, and use the pistol for enemies on movement or at short range. Good on OSM, Lighthouse or Overpass, if you choose it, have fun. And indeed, I had great fun using this kit imitating the US Marine Corps Scout Sniper. The Remington M700, the vanilla version of the M40, is probably one of the most famous and iconic bolt action rifles out there, used for sports, hunting, police, and of course military. You can even find quite a lot of hunters with M40 license here in Japan, where firearms are strictly banned for the public. In-game M40A6 is the second bolt-action sniper rifle you can get for 80,000 credits. Now, the first important choice you need to make when using this rifle is to equip or not to equip the suppressor. Unlocking the task itself is quite easy, only 20 rage kills using ranged weapons such as the M40 really shouldn't be that hard to achieve. Instead, what you need to worry about is the minus 17 damage penalty caused by the use of suppressor. Without any skills unlocked, this means you have a bolt action rifle with damage below 100, 93 to be exact. Even if you have some skills buffing damage from the assault tree, your chance of getting one shot kill on torso is quite low when you consider players with added health or armor. So usually, I'd recommend players to use stock M40 for mid-range maps and suppressed M40 for larger maps like construction, where you can easily make follow-up shots without being countered by your target. For me, this was not even a choice since the kit specifically mentioned Task M40 to be used, but I had a pretty interesting result with my current skill build. I do have parts alignment skill for the silencer parts, reducing damage penalty by 75%, but when I equip task on M40, it actually increased damage by one point. You can see that the stock version has 125 damage by default and suppressed version 126 damage. On the negative aspect, the fire rate scale on the scout tree doesn't seem to affect the rate for M40 or any bolt action rifles in game. Another unique feature worth mentioning for M40 is its very stable side between shots. As you know, this is a bolt action rifle, meaning you need to rechamber a new round after every shot, and oftentimes you lose your target during that motion. However, M40 manages to keep the optics still and stable for you to keep eyes on target in case you need to make a follow up shot. This is especially notable when comparing with the SV98, a tier 1 CR sniper. You can see the drastic difference on stability between these two CR sniper rifles. Overall, M40 is the true sniper rifle in the sense of having high accuracy, good concealment of sound, and moderate damage. You will suffer from this more as you progress your level, but as long as you stay accurate and aim for headshots, you will leave a good score in higher rank servers. As for the secondary, I went with the Glock 17 DevGrew since I had neither of M1911 and USB task unlocked. There's really nothing much to talk about this pistol, you can get it for free after making an first in-game purchase, has one of the highest magazine capacity for single fire pistols, and is equipped with mini red dot sights so you don't need to worry about dealing with poor pistol iron sights. One thing to be careful is the low penetration of rounds this pistol has, only 10, as much as buckshot sidearms, meaning that you will need to shoot a lot of bullets to take out armored targets. That is of course avoidable if you go for the headshots. Just like I said in the beginning, I really had a great time using this kit, staying one step behind the front always rewards you with a good KD ratio, and I also had some great close range combat using both primary and secondary weapons. Of course, it wasn't always a success, but Glock 17 with its high magazine capacity did help me a lot in many occasions. But this leaves me with another question, did I enjoy Yunzian because of how good the guns are or how good my skill was in those games? Probably not. I still think the number one factor separating good from bad game is the team balance. If you have a good team, you have a good time. If you have a bad team, 
Well, good luck winning that game. I just don't understand why we haven't seen any form of team balance system being built for the game. It doesn't matter whether rank is an accurate representation of players' skills or not, just implement something to the game. It'll at least stop all the high rank people sticking in one side grinding for yet another high kill streak. That's it for this episode of Kit Selection. If you have any clever or fun combination of weapons and maps to play, make sure to leave a comment in this video, and I'll feature one of them in my next video on this series. Remember, the more precise and detailed you are, the more chance of me picking your selection. Hope you guys enjoyed the video as always, and I'll see you in the next one.